How's it going, everybody? Dieter Kurtenbach here at Toyota Center. Come join me courtside as we talk about one of the best basketball games you will ever see, especially if you're a Golden State Warriors fan. Warriors beat the Houston Rockets in game six of their Western Conference second round series, 118 to 113. Absolutely spectacular this game was. Everything that you could have asked for for the Golden State Warriors and a little bit more. I said after game four of this series that they were going to have to tap into their championship spirit. In game five when Kevin Durant went down, they absolutely did that. And in game six they did it for four quarters. It was a spectacular contest from the Warriors. And we got to start, number one, with Stephen Curry on the three big things. Stephen Curry had 33 points in this game. He scored all 33 of those points in the second half, and if that doesn't embody a championship spirit, I don't know what does. Curry, uh, caught uh, in the pregame shoot around or the shoot around this morning, was wearing a pair of shoes from 2015, the Curry Ones, the first year of that dynasty, his first signature Under Armour shoe. And I asked him about it, and he played coy because he's Steph Curry, he didn't want to lean in too much, but he was trying to capture the spirit of that 2015 team. With Kevin Durant out, the Warriors were going to have to go back to a style that frankly they haven't played over the last three years very often and Stephen Curry just went right into it and then for that first half to happen for him to score zero points for him to not make a field goal I mean, it was it was it wasn't a total disaster in the sense that he was still creating for others but he was off and even he admitted after the game that was a really bad first half the only positive was that I wasn't turning the ball over he made up for it and more in the second half 10 points in the third quarter 23 in the fourth quarter, including some preposterous clutch shots. He made a three in that corner over there on the other side of the court. I don't know how he did it. There's very few people on the planet. Maybe James Harden is one of them that can pull off a shot like that. And then ice in his veins, free throws in the final seconds to seal the game for the Warriors. Stephen Curry, Rudy Tomjanovic said in a different building than this in Houston, never underestimate the heart of a champion when the Rockets won, I believe, their second title with Hakeem Olajuwon. That's what the Golden State Warriors showed tonight. Let's go to the second thing. The second thing is the bench. And we've talked so much in this series about the Warriors being top heavy. And it makes sense when you have five all-stars with DeMarcus Cousins and Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson and Draymond Green and Steph Curry, you're gonna play those guys. When you have Andre Iguodala, NBA Finals MVP, you're gonna play them. And the Warriors with their bench, frankly, this entire season, it's been a disappointment. Guys would go hot for a while, they'd be on the bench and get DMPs for a couple of weeks in a row. The Warriors didn't trust anybody on their bench. They had no choice but to trust guys tonight. Curry got into foul trouble in the first half. He got two fouls early in the second quarter. Quinn Cook, who has only seen spot seconds in this series, comes in and played a spectacular basketball game. The stat line doesn't matter, but Quinn Cook had uh, two points, yeah, and was one of five from the floor. But he was excellent. He played the best defensive game, perhaps in his Warriors career tonight. He stayed in front of Chris Paul time and time again. He was never a liability out there, despite the fact that he was clearly the shortest dude on the floor. And he, he spaced the floor for the Warriors. He controlled the ball with poise. He was everything the Warriors needed and more. And he played almost 16 minutes in this game after being at the very end of the Warriors bench. And it wasn't just Quinn Cook. It was a guy like Jonas Jerebko, who has gotten a little bit of run in this series and frankly has been unplayable at times in this series. Coming in there and just doing hustle plays, energy plays. Treading water is probably the wrong way to put it because he got so many minutes. He played 12 minutes tonight. He was a plus four. He only had two points, but he made an impact. And it wasn't a clear liability. It wasn't blood in the water for the Houston Rockets to pounce on. Jordan Bell had a disastrous seven seconds, his only action in this series, only serious action in this series. He gets in 10 minutes, 11 minutes or so, and I thought he was absolutely fantastic in this game. The Warriors wanted to get up and down. The Rockets wanted to play it slow. Jordan Bell's the kind of guy who's going to get you transition opportunities. And again, the stat line doesn't matter. It was the effect that he had on the game. Jordan Bell was great in this contest. And frankly, I thought he should have played a little bit more. Given some of the minutes that Jarebko had towards the tail end of his run, I thought Jordan Bell would have been a good option, especially with Draymond Green in foul trouble himself in the second half. The bench really comes through, and the guy I want to single out more than any of those guys is Sean Livingston. Sean Livingston is probably done at the end of the year. He hasn't made that official yet, but you don't really say to people, I'm probably done at the end of the year, about halfway through the year, unless you're done at the end of the year, right? So you look at what Livingston has done in this series, and, and I talked to him after the game, and he said, I, I've been searching. I, I don't know where my game went. I've been looking for it all year, really. 
and I had to dig down deep and I had to find it tonight. And he absolutely did that. Again, the stat line, we don't have to worry about it too much, but he was a plus 14 in this game, and he had 11 points on four of six. And his length on defense was something that the Rockets just couldn't handle. It's just another really excellent performance from Sean Livingston. And that's, again, part of a champion stuff. Sean Livingston digging down deep and finding it in him to give the Warriors a great game when they absolutely had to have it. Just outstanding, and we we keep saying, I'm gonna keep saying it, because it was that was the difference in this contest. It wasn't that Steph Curry is better than James Harden or Chris Paul is as good as Klay Thompson or anything like that. The Rockets want to make you believe that Clint Capella having a bad game was the reason. They turned on him apparently after the game and saying that he needed to play better. No, 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 the difference was mental toughness, and we saw it in the final five minutes of this ball game, the Rockets faded and the Warriors came through. And frankly, it wasn't just the final five minutes, it was the full 48. The Warriors showed a mental toughness that just cannot be matched. That's how champions go about their business. Let's go to the third thing, and this is, we could go a hundred different routes, but I want to talk about these Houston Rockets. They're frauds. Um, for them to lose this game, is an indictment on everything that's happened up until this point with this team. They have no excuses, absolutely no excuses. They were playing a team that played Jonas Jerebko 12 minutes, Quinn Cook 15 minutes, and Jordan Bell, who Steve Kerr would have left in Oakland had he gotten the chance, 11 minutes tonight. He, they lost to a team that didn't get a point from Stephen Curry in the first half. They lost to a team that looked lost on offense at times. They gave up 14 points. I failed to mention this, I can't believe it. 14 points to Kavon Looney, the defensive stalwart center who looked like Hakeem Olajuwon out here. James Harden disappeared. Chris Paul was excellent in the third quarter, but then he disappeared. And the fact that they could not get the job done here on their home court in an absolute must win game, that they wilted under the pressure of the situation, man, don't come to me about the Houston Rockets next year. I don't care what happens with the Warriors. Don't come to me with the Houston Rockets next year because this team, this Houston Rockets team, is never beating these Warriors. Not when they have the mental makeup that we saw in this game. The mental makeup that we saw in game six of last year's Western Conference Finals, in game seven of last year's Western Conference Finals. If they had competent ownership, they would fire everybody. And I don't know if they'd start completely anew because James Harden is an outstanding player. I think he uses his powers for evil, but he's an outstanding player. Chris Paul, you can't get rid of him with that contract. And I think that they, PJ Tucker and, and, and Austin Rivers, they have some good players on this team and they frankly deserve better than to collectively fall apart under the circumstances, but it just doesn't surprise me when you have leadership like James Harden and Chris Paul, where they're trying to flop their way to a victory. This is what happens when the whistles get put away and you get have to actually play basketball. They wilted under the pressure and the Warriors rose to the occasion. Somebody in the Warriors locker room told me, it's diamonds or burst pipes. Water is filling this entire stadium right now. Every pipe has burst. And it's because the Rockets cannot rise to the occasion and the Golden State Warriors, they're probably gonna have some more diamonds on their fingers when this is all said and done, because they did rise to the occasion. That's what champions do. That's why they have three rings on their fingers already, and they might be getting a fourth. Warriors have the next couple of days off. Thank goodness, because we don't have to come back to Houston. That's awesome. Four hour flight coming back. But I wanna watch some Sharks playoff hockey down at the tank in San Jose tomorrow night. Or I guess tonight, it's pretty late. Warriors are gonna advance. We're gonna find out who their opponent is on Sunday. It's either going to be the Denver Nuggets or the Portland Trailblazers. Both of those teams were the adversaries, unlike these Houston Rockets. Disgraceful performance from them and everything you could ever want more from the Golden State Warriors. That's all I got to say. I got to get the hell out of this state.